Yeah, this looks cool. We can check this out. This is the middleweight Mike Tyson. I don't think there's ever been a boxer more eager to score a knockout than Nigel Benn. Mm. Left hook. Welcome back to Quick Hits here on BLTV Extra. On this series, we take a break from our longer edit-heavy videos to briefly recap a fighter's career of note. Now, now you might start believing in the Dark Destroyer. Start believing I'm number one, second to no one. In today's video, we turn the clock back to 1987 and revisit the rise of one of boxing's most destructive middleweights, Nigel Benn. On a scale of one to ten, his punching power is a perfect ten, mm. and that is no doubt. If you enjoy From our Eubanks, videos, remember yeah. to press the like button and be Eubanks sure to subscribe if you're new. <clears throat> Nigel wasn't a man that liked to waste time, so we better jump straight to the action. Okay. I don't think I've Nigel heard of Benn this guy. was born and raised in Ilford, London during the sweet prime of the swinging 60s, quite possibly the most laid-back decade in recent human history. Yet, his parents were said to have been stern and raised their children all the same. By early teenhood, Ben had been arrested for multiple misdemeanors and quickly embarked on a military career to set his priorities straight. He served four and a half years for the 1st Battalion of the Royal Regiment of Fusiliers. He traveled the world fighting wars, embraced strict discipline, and most importantly, learned how to box. Exciting. Ben campaigned at welterweight during this time and defeated every opponent he faced on the amateur circuit. So dominant, in fact, he even fought men at the heavyweight limit. Once Ben left the army, he signed a multiple fight deal with the UK's leading promoter in Frank Warren. Ben promised violence from the get-go and embarked on a new journey under the alias, the Dark Destroyer. The Dark Destroyer. That sounds nice. <laughs> sounds lovely. I want to have a nice uh, dinner with that guy. Oh. Jesus. That shot. I'm in his out now. Harry Mullen, a popular boxing journalist at the time, dubbed Ben the ultimate fighting machine, as the now 21-year-old steamrolled every domestic rival with ease. Oh, good, straight flat line. Ben adopted the Mike good. Tyson peekaboo style to close the gap and land its vicious hooks. His frantic footwork and constant weaving had his opponents Smart. on edge from the opening bell. Good technique. Oh, oh my goodness. At this point, Ben was a two-round fighter at best. He simply channeled all the anger he had built up inside of him and unleashed it uncontrollably for the first few minutes. <laughs> Two on the turn now right. the Man really was moving like Mike. Oh. Just unleash, unleashing everything while training and while fighting in the first round. No one was able to withstand That's crazy. Rage. I can become world champion because I'm dedicated, <clears throat> and very hungry, and I think, you know, I've got the will to win. You know, I don't want to be second to nobody. I personally do hate him. I hate him. Heart full of hate. In Ben's first 22 fights, he knocked out each and every one of his opponents. The most feared man in British boxing was the word on the street. Who would be brave enough to enter the ring with him? I shall take you out on the night of the 18th of November. You are mine, you belong to me. Well, there was another young man slipping slightly under the radar during the same time period. He was cleaning clocks as brutally as Ben, and letting it be known to whoever tuned in, that the man from London was his number one target. Ambrose Mendy is standing right here. I want your boy. He belongs to me. He's mine. Ben was openly enraged by the audacity of Chris Eubank trying to belittle his name and achievements. He lit the fuse, he told the ITV. He lit the fuse good. If the British public didn't know Eubank beforehand, they certainly did during the buildup. Ben was his usual aggressive, angry self, while Eubank, on the other hand, tormented his rival with an unusual, soft-spoken demeanor. I have to say, there seems an element of genuine hate between these two Ambrose. For sure. I have nothing to say Straight to Nigel. Straight turned his back to him. Uh, intolerable in fact, <coughs> so wild. I have no time for such people. He has no class as far as I see it. After a frantic weigh-in, which saw Ben cut six pounds in six hours, the fight was finally on. Let's see, Willis, there's great expectations here. There really is. Ben entered the ring a heavy favorite. He was the WBO world champion and coming off a first-round KO with a much more accomplished Aran the Blade Barkley. Eubank appeared calm and ready, but this was a big step up for him. He 
such an unusual man, this Chris Eubank. He really is. Oh, he's coming outside on. Straight turn is almost his back to him. End up sluggers that he knows. In the Any crowd strategy is went out the window from the first bell. It was like a British version oh, of Edgar Hearn. Well, Let's say swing. Yeah, he's not going to be able to strut. He's going to have to find her finish. Mm. By the look of it, he could do the business. Well, he's mixing it in the one thing. Ben landed a ferocious uppercut in the fourth, which caused Eubank to lacerate his tongue, an injury oh. worthy of a stoppage. But Eubank hit the evidence. Wait, lacerate? To to fight. Wait, what does lacerate mean? Does that mean to bite or cut? Lacerate. Tongue. What does that mean? Deep cut. Oh, yes. Ugh, damn. Doing that to see. That's gross. Round five. The next few rounds were close, but Ben edged ahead <coughs> on the cards, and he scored a flash knockdown in the eighth. Eubank wasn't hurt, and he battled back quickly and was eventually paid off for some unorthodox movements that opened Ben up for a flurry of shots. Just poured it on him. I actually thought he was gonna win. Three months later, Ben was back doing what he does best, scoring knockouts. That was a crazy like back and forth. Come and fight me. Give the public what they want to see. Not only is John Jarvis has had seven fights in seven years, fight someone like me who's been fighting all the time and who wants to have a fight with you. He rematched Eubank some years down the line, this time earning a draw in what okay. has to be said was an all-time classic. But again. Over half a million people worldwide watched the Ben Eubank rematch, which caught the eye of superstar promoter <coughs> Don King, who wanted his own young, hungry fighter Gerald McClellan to get a slice of the That means pie. they probably had a third fight. Look at the man's record. A 20 odd knockouts in the first round. An American writer that I was reading this week, Ray Chu, is the number two in the world, pound for pound. Who was number one? With the promise of a record high purse, Ben accepted the American's challenge, knowing full well he was a significant under. First of all, the newspapers are saying this is going to be the fight of the decade. One thing's for sure, it's not going to last a distance. I would personally rank McClellan the hardest puncher ever at the middleweight limit. He could break a fighter down effortlessly. Just I mean, he flatlined a lot of people. Can McClellan finish him off? He's down again. I think he said over 20 earlier. McClellan earlier. himself predicted, I can't see anything less than a vicious knockout. And after just 35 seconds, he pulverized Ben out of the ring. McClellan looking for him straight away, Reg. Right from the opening bell, he's looking for the finisher. He's ducking very low, Jim, below the, the waistline. Oh, my. Oh, the my. oh, my goodness. Out the ring. Ben was never the type to lay down and feel sorry for himself, so he jumped right back up and proceeded to go toe to toe with the American slugger. The bout started to even out. Ben arguably taking another control, war, but McClellan, being the warrior he was, fought <coughs> back and scored another knockdown in the eighth. Right above us here, Jim. Look at there he goes again. The wounded oh. Lan bit again. But he's, he's Legs up that oh. Legs up that dredge. He's got to get out of that corner. Even Jim. in the corner. He's got to get out of that corner and he won't. But he doesn't mind leaving oh the corner. That was the own impetus of. Ben, on his last legs, threw the kitchen sink at Gerald. His off balance and rash attacks resulted in a nasty head clap. Ben is like, some people yeah, he's just throwing everything. His fight. legs are not there at all, though. Enough. He's straight doing spin and roonies. Oh, but he got him. Oh! Shit. <laughs> That's crazy. What seemed like a premature stop was quickly deemed a severe injury. McClellan suffered a bleed on the brain and spent two weeks in a coma, oh. and he never made a full recovery. Oh, man. That was unfortunate. God damn. McClellan was one of my all-time favorite fighters, and it's hard to edit back the footage. But in doing so, it gave me an elevated level of respect for Nigel's performance overall. He was a massive underdog, but fought the greatest fight of his career to gain victory. 
I wish it could have ended differently, but this is a dangerous sport, and each fighter knows every contest True. they enter could well be their last. True. Ben was never the same after the G-Man matchup. He fought five more times and lost his last three. After retirement, Nigel underwent a career as a DJ before moving to Sydney, Australia oh, to bring up his family alongside <laughs> his wife, Carolyn. Ben is now a born again Christian and seeks only the glory of his now fighting He's sons, Harley and Diesel. <laughs> There were rumors of a 2018 <clears throat> comeback, but thankfully, for the vast majority of boxing fans at least, he suffered a minor injury and called it off. That's very enjoyable. He was like a, in his like early career, he really did look like a, like a smaller Mike Dyson. <laughs> That's crazy.